I'm sure that you've heard of a serious bacterial infection called Staphylococcus epidermidis, or Staphylococcus aureus, also known as Staph, at some point in your lifetime. Although you may not have had a Staph infection before, people with atopic dermatitis, like me, are especially at high risk for developing this infection. Although there are treatments like antibiotics, the research in helping these patients is still widely practiced because of how serious a Staph infection is. One particular area of research that is still newer in understanding ways of lessening the counts of staph is called the phototherapy unit. Today, I will be sharing with you the research of the effects of exposing staphylococcus epidermis and Luria roth to a UVB at-home phototherapy light. Atopic dermatitis, also known as AD, is an inflammatory chronic skin disease that affects around 16.5 million adults in the world, including me. Of these 16.5 million adults, 6.6 .6 million report moderate to severe cases of AD. AD results in rashes or red patches of skin that tend, to black, or that tend to crack open and bleed easily. Atopic dermatitis is related to a gene variation that disrupts the skin's ability to protect itself from sensitivities and allergies. Currently, there is no treatment for atopic dermatitis, but there are ways to help the skin, like ointments or topical creams. Because atopic dermatitis is related to a gene variation that interrupts the skin's ability to protect itself, many patients are prone to accumulating bacterial infections. One of these bacterial infections is called Staphylococcus aureus, also known as S. aureus. Staphylococcus epidermidis is also known to be an aggravating factor to AD. Since people like me are more prone to staph infections, that is why I'm interested in discovering ways to specifically, specifically lessen S. epidermidis counts in patients with atopic dermatitis. Most people are familiar with the form of electromagnetic radiation. Naturally, the sun is the strongest source of this non-ionizing radiation and artificially is most commonly found throughout different lights and tanning beds. One of these artificial lights is called a phototherapy system. Phototherapy uses ultraviolet light to help heal various skin conditions, including atopic dermatitis. Those with severe symptoms of atopic dermatitis can find beneficial effects from the phototherapy system. Not only does the UVB the UVB phototherapy system help lessen the skin, um, that help lessen the skin disease, but it also helps prevent bacterial infections. Lars Gardotteron, Toms Wilsgard, Lars H. Borland, and Edward S. Falk performed a study that assessed how UVB radiation affects, affects skin microbiota in patients with atopic dermatitis. In order to investigate the effect of UVB radiation, 20 adult patients with atopic dermatitis and 20 healthy controls were randomly selected to have 20 UVB treatments. Before, immediately after, and two weeks after, after bacterial samples were collected. It was found that S. aureus counts in patients with atopic dermatitis were lessened by the UVB treatment, although S. epidermidis counts in patients with atopic dermatitis didn't change because of the UVB radiation. Here, the gap in research is due to the unknown if the UVB light will lessen counts in S. epidermidis without testing it on a person with atopic dermatitis. In order to bridge this gap, S. epidermidis will be exposed to UVB phototherapy light in Luria broth. What we know about the research of phototherapy so far is that phototherapy can lessen the counts of Staphylococcus aureus and also help prevent atopic dermatitis. Since so it can tackle both issues in one option, it is a beneficial new therapy. My question is, what are the effects of exposing Staphylococcus epidermidis and Luria broth to a UVB at-home phototherapy light? My hypothesis to my question is the UVB at-home phototherapy light will lessen the counts of S. epidermidis and Luria broth. In order to conduct the experiment, bacteria needed to be cultured. The Staphylococcus epidermidis bacteria was originally bought from Trans-Mississippi Biological Supply. Once the bacteria was obtained, a subculture needed to be created. A sterile technique was used in the fume head with gloves. A nitro loop was flamed in the Bunsen burner and an open mouth of a test tube was flamed. Then the loop was used to inoculate a Luria broth auger slant culture. This was repeated to create a total of seven S. epidermidis subcultures that were eventually stored in an incubator at a temperature of 37.4 degrees Celsius. After creating the subcultures, a phototherapy system was bought. The light bought was a dermahealer compact UV phototherapy lamp. The wavelength of the lamp was 311 nanometers, or also known as NM. Before conducting the real experiment, some pre preliminary research had to be done. 
For the preliminary research, pre-purchased cultures of Escherichia coli, also known as E. coli, from Trans-Mississippi Biological Supply were used. For the preliminary research, a 24-well microplate was used to hold the bacteria in the Lurie broth that was being exposed to the UVB light. To start, I pipetted 1,000 milliliters of the Lurie broth in each of the wells of the 24-well microplate. The Lurie broth was a pre-purchased auger that was dissolved in distilled water, sterilized in an autoclave, and then stored in the fridge. After filling each well, an inoculating loop was used to take a sample of bacteria from the S. coli and twist it into each of the wells to expose the bacteria to the Lurie broth. Then, the wells were exposed to the UVB phototherapy light that same day. A timer was set for one minute. For the first 30 seconds, a piece of tin foil was used to cover three out of the six wells in order to act as a barrier between the UVB light and the bacteria in the Lurie broth. After 30 seconds, the tinfoil was taken off in order for it to be ex everything to be exposed. This allowed for two different exposure times, a 30 second exposure time and a one minute exposure time. After being exposed, the wells were put into the incubator. Two days later, a process called serial dilution was practiced on two one minute exposure wells and three 30 second exposure wells. Serial dilution is the process of diluting a solution to a factor that reduces the concentration of cells. This will help with counting the colonies in each sample in order to compare the data. So, 1,000 milliliters of exposed E. coli was put into the first tube. Then, 900 milliliters of Lurie broth was put into tubes number two, three, four, and five. After that, 100 milliliters of the original concentration was diluted into the second tube and all the way until the last tube. This resulted in the first tube being 100% of the original concentration and the fifth tube being 0.01% of the original concentration. Once it was diluted to 0.1% and 0.01% of the original concentration, a loop was used to grab the bacteria from the tube and inoculate it on an auger plate. An auger plate was made for each 0.1% and 0.01% sample that was diluted. Once all the auger plates were done, they were incubated. After two days in the incubator, they were examined and the number of colonies on each plate were counted. Since the preliminary results were conducted with E. coli, comparing the counts to each other were ineffective for my experiment. Although going through this research allowed me what I needed to, allowed me to practice what I needed to for the real experiment and understand what I needed to change. For example, trying to hand count the 0.1% and 0.01% dilutions on the auger plate were really hard because there were a lot of colonies. So instead, in the real experiment, I decided to dilute to 0.01% and 0.001% to have fewer colonies to count. Second, instead of using 1,000 milliliters of Lurie broth in each of the 24 wells, it would be easier to use 2,000 milliliters of Lurie broth so there would be more for the serial dilution. Lastly, I realized from the preliminary results that I needed to control in the real experiment in order to compare data. Overall, the preliminary research was beneficial in learning how to complete my real experiment well. During the real experiment, the subcultures of S. epidermidis that I created were used. 2,000 milliliters of Lurie broth were pipetted into each of the 24 wells of the microplate. An inoculating loop was then used to take a swipe of the bacteria and twist it into each well to expose the Lurie broth. That same day, the wells were exposed to the UVB phototherapy light. The timer was set for one minute. This time, for the first 30 seconds, four out of the six wells were covered with the um, tinfoil barrier from the UVB light. After 30 seconds, the tinfoil was pulled so it only covered columns five and six. Column, columns five and six were never uncovered from the tinfoil while the light was on because they were the control group. So after the one minute was done, I had three exposure times. Two columns were one minute, two columns were 30 seconds, and the last two columns were a control group. As you can see, I labeled it right here. I labeled S. epidermidis, my initials, the date, the two one minute columns, the two 30 second columns, and the two control columns. After being exposed, they were put into the incubator for two days. After sitting for two days, the same serial dilution that was used in my preliminary research was used in the real experiment, and that, except this time it was diluted to 0.01% and 0.001%. After serial dilution for two of the one minute exposure samples, two of the 30 second exposure samples, and two of the control samples, they were all plated on auger plates, like in the preliminary research. The bacteria were allowed to grow on the auger plates for two to four days before the colonies were hand counted and the data was recorded. There were three different trials of the experiment and three graphs for each trial. One control graph, a 30 second graph, and a one minute graph. 
Looking at the graphs compared to each other, if we look at the 0.01% dilution that is colored in blue, we can see that the, in the control group there's 24 colonies counted, in the 30 second time exposure there's 26 for one, and in the, in the one minute time exposure there's a 30 count colony. There's not much difference between the three different exposure groups, and so I thought there was no effect from the UVB radiation in the different time exposures. Although just one trial isn't enough to come up with a conclusion. For the second trial, the colonies, the auger plates were allowed to sit in the incubator for four days, allowing the colonies to have double the time to grow so there would be double the amount of colonies to count. So if we look at the 0.01% dilution again, that is in blue, and we look at the control graph, we see 65, 69, we look at the 30 second time exposure, 64, 72, and the one minute time exposure at 60 and 64. Since it only ranges from 60 to 72 colonies, I thought, again, there wasn't any effect from the UVB radiation on any of the exposure times. At this point, I hadn't seen any effect like I did in my first trial, but I decided to complete one more trial to make my results effective. For the third trial, again, I let the auger plate sit in the incubator for four days. So double the amount of time as the first trial, resulting in double the amount of colonies that were able to grow. Again, looking throughout all three different time exposures, it ranged from about 60 to 77. Although, in the 30 second time exposure, there was one that had a count of 12 colonies. I'm assuming this is human error, since none of the other graphs in any of the other trials had this low of a count. The third trial finalized my conclusion that there's no major change in colony count across the different exposures. <clears throat> My original question was, can UVA light therapy treatment decrease staphylococcus aureus counts in patients with atopic dermatitis? I was, in, I was going to use pig skin, staph bacteria, and a UVA light. Although, after talking with Dr. Krakora, a dermatologist from Health Partners Clinic in Hudson, he helped me realize that using pig skin would not be the best option. Instead, he introduced me to auger plates. I didn't use pig skin because I thought it would be hard to maintain the pig skin and the staph bacteria might grow differently on the pig skin and it overall just wouldn't be something that I could do. And so also he introduced me to UVB light because he told me that UVB light is safer than UVA light. And lastly, he told me that there was such thing as a home phototherapy unit that I could use instead of just using a UVB light. <coughs> so relating my conclusion to my initial hypothesis, I was wrong. There was no effect exposing the S. epidermis to UVB at home phototherapy light. Relating my conclusion back to the research done by Lars Carb, Donnerup, Tom Tulsgaard, Lars H. Borland, and Edward S. Falk, my conclusion lines up with their conclusion. They said UVB treatment seemed to have no effect on S. epidermis during treatment for patients with atopic dermatitis. This directly aligns with my conclusion. My conclusion therefore states that a UVB at home phototherapy light is not a successful, successful treatment option for lessening the counts of Staphylococcus epidermidis in Luria Brown. Clap, 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 thank you, thank you. A couple of questions. Um, how did the choices you made when designing your research method impact your research process? So originally I was going to use pig skin and I was super set on using the pig skin because I thought that would be really close to um, human skin, and so I thought that would, exposing the staff to the pig skin would have similar effects, but after talking with, talking with my professional, I realized that using the pig skin was not going to be effective in my experiment because it would be hard to maintain, and so that's when I decided I would use auger plates, so I think switching that was one of the most effective pieces of my um, research, and also talking with my professional I realized that instead of using UVA light, I was going to use UVB light because UVB light is more effective than UVA light. Okay. Um, how do your findings provide direction for future research? I think since my findings say that UVB light has no effect on Staphylococcus epidermidis in Luria broth, and since the research that I used um, from the other um, uh, research from uh, Lars Cardona and Tom Wolfgaard, Lars H. Borland, and Edward S. Falk, what they said that um, UVB also had no effect on Staphylococcus epidermidis counts in patients with atopic dermatitis. 
um, that it shows that UVB light doesn't have an effect on the um, staph, staphylococcus epidermidis, so I don't think it would be beneficial for people to keep trying that, and I think that we should try to find a new therapy option instead of keep testing UVB light. Okay, okay. Um, let's see here. What was the most important research skill you developed as a result of this process, and how might you apply it in the future? I think the most important research skill that I developed was understanding that my hypothesis doesn't necessarily have to be the outcome of my experiment. For example, the first trial, I was confused why my re results weren't showing anything, and I because I thought my hypothesis was that the UVB would help lessen the counts of Staphylococcus epidermis. So I was confused and I thought my um, results were wrong, but after doing the trial more and more, I realized that just because my results aren't the same as my hypothesis doesn't mean they're actually wrong. So I think I could take this into um, later experiments and stuff that I do, um, showing that my hypothesis is just my hypothesis. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the outcome of my experiment. Okay, thank you.